Good morning, everybody. This is the 4th of July. Today is a hollow day. I'm sure that some people are probably on hop on vacation at the beaches and or wherever they want to enjoy this day. But anyway, we're here again. Praise the Lord. I'm still alive. I'm not dead. And you're not dead. We're all alive this morning and well. Thank God for our life. Praise the Lord. All right, I need to make a couple of announcements before I get into my talk for today. Uh, make sure that you, hopefully you have already registered for the state convention in Clarion, Pennsylvania. And hopefully if you haven't made your reservation, you will make them soon at the hotels. Maybe, I don't know how many people are going to go to the uh, state convention, but you need to make your reservations if you plan on staying in one of those hotels there in Carlisle. And like I say Carlisle, I don't know why I, I, I want to say Carlisle, it's Clarion, in Clarion, Pennsylvania. It's going to be at the New Hope Church of God of Prophecy in Clarion. It's not far off of, what's that, 80, I think, going up through there. Carlisle is right off of, I mean, Clarion is right off of 80, up there off, of, and if you're going north, Northwest, I guess you call that. But anyway, remember that. <clears throat> and hopefully, hopefully, we're planning on maybe opening the, the church back up the 1st of August. Put that on your calendar as well. The first, the first Sunday in August, if everything goes well. I'm not sure. But there's still a lot of things that need to be done uh, that need to take place before we do this. Uh, if you, I, I have said for the last 10 months, if you got some extra time, you want to do something, there is always something to do uh, at the church. Okay, we usually work there on Saturday uh, or whatever, whatever day the guys can go. I, I can go any day, but the guys that's helping me, I wanna, I'm down to two guys that's helping me every time we go. And uh, But I guess that's all this in the church, two guys, or three of us. Well, it looks that way sometimes. But anyway, that's the way it is. Whatever, 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 whatever will be this. So song said, whatever will be, will be. There's nothing you can do about that. Okay. Thank you. I thank you all for what you do for the church, for your faithfulness, and your paying your tithes and your offerings. I appreciate it very, very much, and I know the Lord appreciates it. And the Lord will repay you for all the efforts that you put forth as you work for Him. We're working for Him. All that we do, we're working for Him, to please Him, that He may be pleased at what we do for Him as we live in this world of His. This is His world. Amen? All right. My thought this morning is the reason for worship. The reason for worship. <clears throat> Pray for me. I think I got a, I'm, I'm supposed to be on the program to preach at the state convention. Just need your prayers. If you're not going, pray for me. All right. That the Lord will bless us as we stand before the congregation that day, that particular time. That, by, by the way, the convention we're going to be for two days the 16th and the 17th. And uh, the 16th will start at 5 o'clock in the afternoon on Friday. And Saturday morning is going to be two sessions that Friday night. So come be prepared to stay a little while. And on Saturday morning, it will open again at 9 o'clock. And it's going to be two sessions uh, that Saturday morning. And after the final session, hopefully, He's, the overseer is looking to be able to dismiss around 5 o'clock on that Saturday. And you'll be able to come home. Those that maybe have to come home and preach on Sunday, they'll have opportunity to get back home and be ready for a Sunday morning service, supposedly. All right. <clears throat> Let us pray. Father in heaven, Lord, I thank you again for allowing us to be here this morning. ask you to bless us in the next few moments that we may say, what it is that you have placed upon our heart to say that it might be a blessing to those 
who may be listening and looking this morning. Let your will be done, not mine, but yours. Touch somebody's heart. There may be somebody this morning that are, are sick in their body. I'm sure they are. There are several members I know, though, that are, are sick in their bodies. Pray, Lord, that you would touch them this morning. Let them feel the inspiration of your spirit or the healing virtue that comes only from you. You touch somebody for me this morning. Some of those that are sick in their bodies. Not calling all their names, but there's several of them that need you this morning to touch their bodies and make them whole. And I know that you have the power to do that. That's why I ask you to do it. We can't, but you can. You have all power in your hand. You're there right now by that bedside or by that chair, wherever the individual may be sitting. And you're able to touch them if they will look up to you and receive what it is that you have for them this morning, the healing virtue. Let them feel it and let it be let them be made whole. You do this for us, Lord, we'll be so careful again to give your name the glory, the praise, and the honor. All shall be yours, the blessings and all blessings. We ask in Jesus' name and for your sake. Amen. <clears throat> Amen. The reason for worship. Why we worship. We certainly benefit from it. But worship is first and foremost a selfless act of love towards God. We do not worship just because we enjoy the emotions or the sensation of doing worship makes us feel good. And it does. I'm, 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 I'm beginning to realize that when I was younger, I could hoop and howl all day. But I'm beginning to understand that my, my, what my dad I said, I said, I think I said this before. My dad said to us, me and my brother one time, you know, he said, just keep living, boys, because we were running the streets. And when we should have been sitting down, he thought we gonna, wouldn't be able to go to them. We work all day and come home, take a shower and hit the street. He said, well, just keep on living. So. I live to a, to a place where I know that what that's all about now. Okay. Worship makes it does make us feel good, but it is not the primary motivation for worshiping God. I'm going to give you some reasons why we worship. We worship God because of who he is. God is creator, and he is, the, is worthy of our worship. We worship him because of his transcendent uniqueness and holiness. Holiness. Remember that word, holiness. We're living in a time where it seems to me, now I may be wrong, but it seems to me a lot of people don't believe in living holy anymore. They people believe in doing anything they want to do. I, I'm in this church today because of, of holiness. I, I was in churches where people said that they lived holy, but I saw other things about them that made me not even, I, I got to the place where I didn't even want to go to church because I saw people living double lives. And and that I knew that wasn't what, if that, I, not, as a matter of fact, I said to myself and I said to the Lord, Lord, if that's all there is to living, for living a Christian life, the way that pe I'm seeing people live it, then why, 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 what is the reason for living it? But after I found God for myself, I found, I had to find him for myself. And I realized, you know what? Let people do whatever they want to do. You live right. You live the way the Holy Spirit is teaching you to live. And maybe somebody will get in, it will be an example to somebody they might change the way that they're living. So, Paul said all that to say that God is worthy of our worship. We worship him because of his uniqueness, his holiness. And sometimes it seems like a lot of people have forgotten about living a holy life, like I just said. So the first reason is simply because God commands it. First Chronicles 6 and 29 and 30 tells us, to give to the Lord the glory 
he deserves. Bring your offering and come to worship him. That When I say offering, that don't mean money. That means bring yourself and worship God with your body. And not only we do, we do need to worship him with the money too, but we will need to worship him with these bodies that we have. Give him, give him our selfless act of love and worship to him. That's what he deserves from us. Okay, worship the Lord in all his holy splendor. I'm still reading from 1 Chronicles 6 and 29. The 31st says, Let all the earth tremble before him. The world is firmly established and cannot be shaken. The 31st verse says, Say, Let the heavens be glad and let the earth rejoice. Tell all the nations that the Lord is king. I got a feeling right about now that the, every nation knows that God is the king. If this kind of, this coronavirus hasn't taught us a lesson, I mean, when I say us, I mean the whole world. If that hasn't taught us a lesson that there's a God somewhere, they, I don't know what I don't know what would happen, what what it is going to take to teach people to know that there's a God somewhere that we need to be able to we need to be worshiping Him. The meaning of worship refers to the supreme honor of veneration given either in thought or deed to a person or thing. The Bible teaches that alone, the Lord alone is worthy of worship. People have the audacity to serve sadly to give accounts of people who worship other objects. Among those are false gods, images and idols, heavenly bodies or forces of heaven, and even Satan himself. People worship him. It is indeed a tragedy that many worship gods that they carry and not the God who carried them. Did you get that? Indeed, this is tragic that many worship the gods they carry and not the God who carried them. God Almighty alone is worthy of worship. Worship requires reverence to the Lord. This includes the honor and respect directed towards the Lord in thought and feeling. It's one thing to obey a superior unwillingly. It is quite another to commit one's thoughts and emotions in that obedience. Jesus said that those who worship God must do it in spirit and truth. John 8, 24 tells us this. The term spirit speaks of a personal nature of God. It is from my person to God's person and involves the intellect, emotions, and will. The word truth speaks of the content of worship. God is, is pleased when we worship him. Understanding his true character. We worship God because of what he has done for us. We worship him because he sent Jesus to die on our behalf so that we might be free from sin. I still today feel very bad about the times I lived in sin, never even thinking about what I was doing. Today, we have people living in sin, 
knowing that they are sinning and not even caring. I did a lot of that out of ignorance and stupidity. But I am thankful every day that the Lord saved my soul from a burning hell. I was on my way to hell, not even realizing I was on my way to hell. I've, I assume that there are, are millions of people this morning that live in lives not knowing that they are living a life that's going to send them to hell unless they change. And it's, it's our responsibility to teach and tell them that they, if they don't change, where they're headed to. Some it will make a difference. Some people just don't care. So what the attitude is in this world today? So what? And I had that attitude one time. I remember when the Lord first saved me, I had an attitude. And I remember when I backslid, I had a back, I had this idea that, so what? But it's more than a so what if you end up in hell. Most people don't believe that there is a hell or hell. Some believe that they are just going to live and die, and that is the end. But my friend, death is not the end. Death is a crossroad. It's a crossroad from, road from, from life to living, from this life to another life that we're going to live forever. Trust me, you don't want to miss that. And equally important reason for worship is that God deserves our worship. He possesses the attributes that merit our worship and service. Among those are faithfulness. There are some, there are some, some of you, some of you are just as faithful as you can be. I, even I appreciate your faithfulness. Not even thinking how much God appreciates your faithfulness to him. He's faithful. God is a faithful God. And he wants us to be faithful people to him and to one another. God is a, is a God of mercy. And he's a God of holiness. And a, a, and, a, and created power of his unveiled glory. That's why back in the day, you would see people fall prostrate in worship. You don't see much of that nowadays. You know why? Because a lot of people don't believe or not. I mean, maybe they believe or they may not be trying to live a holy life. Listen to me. Somewhere I read in this, in this book, without holiness, no man shall see the Lord. Don't you want to see the Lord? I want to see him one day. Not enough holiness in the lives of people today. We worship God because he commands us to. Jesus teaches in John 4 that the Father is seeking true worshipers. And true worshipers are those that worship God in both spirit and truth. We worship God to bless and to honor him. Not ourselves, not to honor ourselves, but to honor him. Worship is not primarily for us. We certainly benefit from it, like I said earlier. But worship is first and foremost a selfless act of love toward God. Yes, we enjoy worship, but that is not to be our primary motivation of worshiping God. We worship God because it pleases Him. And a final reason for worship is that we need to give it. People cannot find personal fulfillment apart from the glad submission of themselves and worshipful obedience to God. Do you understand that? Listen. 
People seek all kinds of things in life to try to find happiness. And trying to find the only way that you're going to find true happiness, true contentment, true satisfaction is if you allow the Lord to be a part of your life. He need not just be a part. He need to be the master of your life. He need to be the head of your life. And you should follow him. How do we follow him? We through this book, through these 66 books in this Bible, that's how we follow him. You need to read it and then live it. You can't just read it and throw it down and walk away and live like the devil. Amen? You need to live what you say. Preach. It's like a man, like a boy told me one time, he came to church and he was begging for money. So I told him, I said, son, I, I don't have any money to give you. So he kind of got angry with me and turned, he walked away. He said, you ought to practice what you preach. So I didn't, I didn't really understand what he meant about that. I guess he meant that I should give him some money. I told him, I said, well, I'm trying my best to practice what I preach. <laughs> God, he is the creator, and we are the creatures. Revelation 4 and 11 tells us. People who adopt as their master anything less than God are building their lives on quicksand. I read an article the other day that said, why does quicksand go so slow? You would think if you fell into a quicksand, you just sink, go let down. But it doesn't do that. I've seen, I've never been in quicksand, but I've seen people, you know, horses or cows or things, get in quicksand. And it works slowly. And they slowly go down. It don't just sink right down. But it is slowly go down. And so that's the way people lives are when you are living, are not living less than God. You're building Lies on quicksand. You're going to slowly diminish if you don't change your way, turn around, and live for the Lord. You'll find yourself slowly sinking in quicksand. There will be no, you can be no stronger than the object that you worship. Psalms 115 and 4 and 8 tells us. One who worships God, however, not only participate in the occupation of heaven, but find joyful satisfaction for the present. Do you understand that? Remember, remember this last scripture that I'm going to quote. The Bible says, if my people, which are called by my name, that's 2 Chronicles 7, 14. If my people, which are called by my name, would humble themselves and pray, seek my face, turn from their wicked ways, then would they hear from heaven, and I will heal their land. There is safety. There is help. There is security in living and serving and worshiping the one and true and only God of heaven, our God and Savior. Hear me? Live for the Lord. If, you don't, if you're not living for the Lord today, make, make, make a change in your life. You want to be happy? A lot of people walk around, they're not happy. You know what makes you happy? If you change the way that you live, Change your life. Let the Lord come into your life. I say this, I say this so many times. If you live, if you turn your life over to the Lord and you are not a happy individual, would you come see me? And we'll talk and we'll pray and we'll see what's, what's the hold up. There has, there has to be some object or some substance or something that has gotten in between you and God that cause you not to be a happy, satisfied individual. I'm telling you what I know. Are you going to have some ups and downs? Of course. Just because you get Jesus in your life and you 
live for him. Every day is not going to be like Sunday. I, I don't know why they say that. But they say that because they say that if you go to heaven, every day is going to be like Sunday. Well, what is every day like Sunday like? Today? Well, I guess they mean there'll be a time you just worship the Lord. That's what we used to do on Sunday. We go to church, we worship the Lord, and we do whatever else we do have to do on that day. But let me tell you something. I believe any individual that accept Jesus Christ in their life will be a happy individual. God bless you. May heaven smile upon you. I hope I've said something this morning to be a blessing to you. And if you don't know Jesus, please get to know him before it's too late. This world going to run out pretty soon, I believe. I, don't, I know it can't go much longer like this. There's too much murder, too much killing, too many, too many bad things that are, are happening in this world right now. And it can't go on forever like this. All right. So if you don't know the Lord, get to know him as your Savior today. The Lord bless you and keep you. Father in heaven, Lord, I thank you this morning for these words that you've given me. Hopefully, Lord, somebody heard something that will cause them to want to live a life for you. Would you bless somebody for me this day? Bless somebody, Lord. Somebody need you. They may not call upon your name, but I call upon your name for that individual right now that don't know how to reach out their hand to you and ask for help. Would you please touch somebody for me this morning? I'm sure somebody needs a special touch right now. Lord, if you do this for me, I'll be so careful to give your name the glory, the praise, and the honor. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, I say, pray. Amen. Amen. God bless you all. May heaven smile upon you. Stay close. Stay with the Lord. If you're not with him, get with the Lord. And live for him to the best of your knowledge and ability. Amen. God bless you. See you next time. If God will and nothing happen. And I still be on this side. One of these days I'm going to go on the other side. But I'm still on this side. As long as I'm on this side, I'm going to do the best I can for the Lord. When I get on the other side, everything will be all over. On the other side. I'll be with the Lord. And you'll be with the Lord. Amen. God bless you. Goodbye.